This program is made possible by support from the California Department of Conservation and the partnering cities of Costa Mesa and Laguna Beach, California. Do you know a way to help protect the environment and make a little extra money? Recycling cans. Okay, recycle cans. Hi there, I'm Joel Green and this is my daughter. Devin. And welcome to today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you're curious about. So Devin, what did you want to know about cans? How they make them and recycle them. So how do they make them and recycle them, huh? All right. So let's find out on today's Curiosity Quest. Come on, sweetie. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The 36 billion aluminum cans landfilled last year had a scrap metal value of more than $600 million. So for the past few months, we've been saving all of our cans. Now, Devin, do we put our cans in the trash can at home? Where do we put them? Bin. In the recycling bin. Now, not everybody has a recycle bin at their house. We understand that. But where we live, we have a blue recycle can where we can throw all of our cans, and a recycle truck comes around, collects them, takes them to a transfer station, and sends them to a recycler. The other thing you can do, which is what we've done, is we've separated all of our cans from our recycled materials. Of course, we would never put them in a trash can. And we're going to bring them here, and we're going to make Devin a little extra money today. All right, so Devin. How excited are you about taking all these cans that we've saved, recycle them, and make some extra money? <laughs> that looks pretty excited to me. You ready to start? All right, let's go. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Aluminum, discovered in the 1820s, is the most abundant metal on Earth. All right, ready, babe? You want to help Daddy dump? Hey. Whoa! Loud, huh? Yeah. All right. Where's our cans going? There's our cans. Not much for a couple months, but we've got some. All right. So where are we gonna go, Deb? Where are we gonna go? Wow! Look at that. So now, how do you know how much money we're going to get? The scale's over here. There's a scale over there. It weighs it up there, and it shows the amount right here. So it weighs it up top and then shows the amount right here. Yeah. So we brought you two pounds, 2.7 pounds. To recycle. Keep the air clean again. <laughs> to reuse. When you draw on something, then then you don't put it in the trash can, but you put it in the recycling can. Reuse means to use plastic or aluminum to make other stuff that we use. If you drink soda and then you and then you put it 
and then you crush the cans. You dump the cans into another thing, and then you get, and then you um, put it, and then you go to a little store. All right, so our cans went up the conveyor, and I'm here with Dwight from Tomra. Thanks for having us out today. Oh, thank you for coming. Oh, I appreciate it. So tell us how the process starts on your end. Okay, well, you know, you're, the, we bring in the aluminum. The co consumer brings in the aluminum cans or the plastic, and what happens is it goes over here on a conveyor that comes up here into a blower. That blower moves the material over into our baler that you can see up here and that material gets bailed and processes it right out through here and then we ship it out to the market. It goes to a processor who then takes it and smelts it and then recycles the material back into, uh, you know, back out to the market, back to the consumer. Now, the cans that we're bringing in here today, will they end up becoming something other than cans? Oh, absolutely. Uh, they can be uh, aluminum foil, they can be, um, cans again they can be any you know anything any kind of product that is either uh, has aluminum in it or has plastic in it you know they'll recycle the uh, bottles they'll, they'll become milk jugs again or yeah. they use them for plastic and uh, uh, business applications or industrial applications anything like that I know you don't just take aluminum cans we're focusing on aluminum cans for today's show but you take plastic milk cartons, right milk jugs. take milk jugs plastic water bottles and uh, we even take glass so it's in our best interest, especially in a state like California, to hang onto our own cans, bottles, glass, and bring them to you so we can make some money. Absolutely. Again, it's the right thing to do. You're taking that material, you're putting it back, you know, out there to get recycled and to be used again. Um, you don't get a monetary value for it, but it absolutely is the right thing to do. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. We save enough energy by recycling one aluminum can to run a TV set for three hours. Do you know where people can look to, uh, to find out if they have a recycler in their area? Sure. Uh, you can uh, contact your local hauling company, your local garbage company if you want, mm -hmm. and, and they can tell you, you know, who, who the recycler is. There's also um, state call the state and they can tell you where you can take your recyclables at like in California you can contact them and they can tell you where where a location would be or you can call Tomra and we can tell you where locations are we have locations all throughout southern and northern California about how many locations you're saying quite a few how many yeah there's probably there's over 700 900 locations that you can take the material to all like this just one no normally um, we have four plants in California mm -hmm. where you can bring the material directly to our plant mm -hmm. and and uh, you can go to Ralph's grocery stores or Stater Brothers, those types of places, oh. and you'll see in the parking lot yeah. a replant it. Yeah. And uh, you go in there, and you, it's the same process. You bring the material to them. We take that material. It goes into a container, and then we have trucks that go out, pick that material up, and they bring it in here, and we process the material. So all the grocery stores in the area, those containers, when they're full, they bring them right here. Absolutely. And yes. then you go through the process here. Yes. All right. Now, why is the floor vibrating? <laughs> well, we have this huge baler going on right over here. Uh -huh. And this is bringing in all the aluminum. It comes through a eddy current. Eddy current. What that is, is it's an air current. It's basically an aluminum magnet. Ooh. And what happens is the material comes in, and takes the aluminum into the uh, into the sort line here, into the conveyor here, and then any trash or um, you know garbage or anything like that, it actually goes into another conveyor. It comes out and gets dumped, and we take that out to the for trash. All right, so Dwight, how heavy are these these what are these, bales, huh? Right. The, each bale weighs approximately 850 to 900 pounds. Oh my goodness. So, so you and I can't lift that by ourselves, then, huh? Well, I could, maybe you could. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, <clears throat> I haven't been exercising lately, so I don't know. How many cans can fit in one bale? 2,000. 800. <laughs> A thousand. A hundred. 800. Almost 100. 300 cans. 500. All right, so Dwight, how many cans will fit in one bale? About 2,800 cans fit in one bale. 2,800 cans. Wow. That's About a lot. 32 cans per pound. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Americans throw away enough aluminum every month to rebuild our entire commercial air fleet. So now what will he do with these bales? So what will happen is he'll take these bales and we'll set them out here uh, getting ready for shipment. Okay. And we ship approximately anywhere from 10 to 15 shipments a week and each shipment has approximately 50 bales. 50, five zero. Five zero. Wow. In fact, here, this is a truck right here pulling in right now. Okay. And he's and gonna, and they're gonna put all these in the back of the truck. So what they'll do when they get a load, they'll they'll fill up that truck and then uh, 50 deliver bales. it out. Now, where will this end up going? This will end up going to um, Alcoa, mm -hmm. and uh, and then they take it and they'll take this material and they'll smelt it, process it and it gets recycled. So when you say smelt it, they're gonna melt it all down, melt basically. Melt it all down. And right. turn it into? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> right. All right. Right. Wow. 50 a week. We do about 15 a week, and it's 50 per load. Per load, right. oh so my goodness. So 15 load, 50 a week, or 50 per load. All right, so I guess we're gonna follow the process of recycling elsewhere. Okay. <laughs> Dwight, thanks for your time, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for coming. All right. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Making new aluminum cans from used cans takes 95% less energy. All right, so we've done our part by keeping the cans out of the landfill, and now we're gonna find out how these recycled cans turn into new cans. I'm here with Mr. Story. Thanks for having us out here. No doubt, Joe. How you doing, buddy? Glad to have you. You bet, Mark. Well, tell us, first of all, thanks for gearing me up here at Ball. Hey, our pleasure. Appreciate it. And what do you guys do from here? You're the manufacturer, right? We manufacture the cans right here. So we've kept them out of landfill, we've recycled them, turned them into these big, what, coils or rolls? Jumbo, jumbo coils, 25,000 pounds of aluminum. Wow! 50% of this is recycled, 50% of it's new. Okay. So these jumbo coils, and I mean jumbo, look at these things. I tried to move them and I couldn't. Well, they're unloaded and they're placed on one of three cupping machines. And what these cupping machines do is they unroll these coils over a giant cutter. And this cutter, it creates numerous miniature cups. What is a cupper? It's a cup, you use a big cup to scoop down and uh, uh, retrieve stuff. A plastic cup? A plastic cup? Uh, something that picks up cans or something? Like a cup? Uh, was you pour something in it? It's something you pour your soda in. All right, so this is a, a cup. This is a can right now, right? That's a cup right now. Will soon be a can when it goes through its process. Like I said, it doesn't look. I can't drink out of this right now. <laughs> Not yet, but in about 45 minutes you'll be able to. Oh really? Yeah. All right. Well, I've got a question uh, before we go on. How long does it take for an ordinary can that let's say I just use it, I threw it in my recycle bin? to now become a new can? Three hours. A month? Two months? A month? Um, a month? A long time? Five minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, eight hour, an eight hour process. Now on average, 60 days. Six, two months. Six days. Two months. Wow. Now you're probably thinking, there are a lot of cups. How do we get cans? Well, we're gonna take these miniature cups here and we're gonna stretch them out to either a 12 inch or a 16 inch can. From here, we're going to wash all these cans before we decorate them. Yeah, I said decorate, you'll find out in a minute here. And we're not just going to wash them clean, we're going to get them squeaky clean. Oh, not clean, squeaky clean. <laughs> all right, now once it's washed, what do you do from there? Send it through a dryer or an oven, dries it all off, sends it over to the decorator, and now it's ready to get the label put on. Now, when it comes to decorating a can, what they're going to do is take all of these colors and put them together as one image. 
but they lay on the colors one at a time to create the image. And then they spray the inside of the can to protect the aluminum from being eaten away by the contents of the can. You know, like your soda or, or juice, whatever it may be in the can. Then each can is necked on the outside. What does it mean to neck a can? Uh, chop it off, I guess. Yeah, chop it off. You put your neck on the can? can. <laughs> Squish it all together or something? Crush it. To recycle? Take off the top. Well, what you do is uh, basically you get the aluminum can and uh, you go like this, put it on your neck, <laughs> and neck, and neck a can. Necked is they take the outside diameter of the can and squeeze it together through a multi-step process that creates a neck at the top of all the cans. I notice, that, yeah, I mean, right now the can seems much firmer when it has, when it's been necked, is that what you call it? That is correct. Necked, than this right here, man. It's, so this gives it a lot of the, what, sturdiness? Strength and stability, yeah. Strength and stability, all right. After each can is decorated, as the process continues, the cans are inspected by the special camera that checks for all the specifications that are set up. And if it doesn't pass inspection, the can is then kicked out. And then, guess what? It's recycled again. How many soda cans do you drink a week? Maybe two cans, that's it. Just two cans? Yeah, or one. Okay, what, what, what if mom's not looking? <laughs> More. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> 80. It, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think your mom heard that one. Huh? <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> I, don't, I can't drink soda. What do you drink? I drink either water, um, juice, and let's see, maybe sometimes milk. A lot? <laughs> None. <laughs> uh, probably one, two max. <laughs> so now we started off with a cup, then we created a can, then we decorated it, then we necked it, and we've inspected it, and now where do they all get stored? Take a guess. How about a warehouse? And I mean a big warehouse. What is an AGV? A good... <laughs> something? Value? A yeah. A good value? Yeah. <laughs> I had never, ever heard anybody say that before. Ever? Ever. Ever, ever? Ever, ever. <laughs> Automatic gasoline. Vendors. <laughs> Pollution? <laughs> AGP, that's of course the uh, amalgamated uh, green uh, uh, vector, vector reel. So Mark, these are the magnets in the floor you were talking about? Correct, and they, they take the whole path of the AGV around and that's what guides the AGV through the warehouse. Speaking of which, Mark, I need to point out a very important safety issue. You have an AGV coming to you right now. Oh, no, Get out so of the thank way. you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, if that wasn't staged, I don't know what was. Excuse us, sir. Sir, what do you call it? Just your workhorse, huh? <laughs> workhorse, there you go. Keep going. Now, we're in a warehouse with a lot of cans. About how many cans are we surrounded by? We run about 450 different labels throughout the year. You mean like the different inks or, dec excuse me, decorations on the cans? Different decorated cans is correct, depending on the customer. 450? Around there. Oh my goodness. So 
How many cans are in this warehouse right now, you think? Well, approximately right now, there's 80 million cans in this warehouse. And we're about, I don't know, three quarters <laughs> of the way full. 80 million cans? Yes. Oh my goodness. Now, okay, I've got to ask, has anyone like knocked over a, a big old pallet of cans? Never knocked them over. We haven't had any earthquakes that's knocked any over. We've had a couple of accidents where a strapping or something got caught on another pallet and we pulled one or two down, but no major catastrophes and we don't expect any. You don't expect any? No. Well, shouldn't we see what happens when a pallet falls? And I know no, we're not going to expect any because once you leave, <laughs> we'll be good to go. <laughs> I, I, I just want to, you know, just to see what it sounds like and looks like. Well, <laughs> you give us the cost of the pallet and you help us clean up the cans, Joel, we'll think about it. That's okay. Not. No, <laughs> not. We're not doing that today. Right. All right. Wow. 450 different labels and 80 million cans. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of cans. Well, Mark, I appreciate you having us out here today. Hey, thanks for coming to Bald Corns. This Pleasure was a ball. It, no pun intended, right? <laughs> you nice. get that all the time, yes, right? we do. Uh, well, well, I'm sorry to, uh, anyway. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Mr. Story, you heard it. All right, so Mark, thanks again. You know what we gotta do? We gotta get back to the recycler and collect some money. <laughs> all right, so we're collecting our money for our cans today. I'm excited. Let's see what we have. Six dollars and fifty cents. Wait. What do you mean, let's go shopping? What? What? I'm left with fifty cents. I guess I better get used to this. <clears throat> I want to thank everyone here at Tamra, Ball Corporation, and Alcoa for teaching us how to recycle cans. And I especially want to thank you, Devin, although I'm left with 50 cents, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if you want to send us on a green quest, let us hear from you. Go to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be your thoughts that send us on our next journey. Now remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious. Have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. 50 cents? Dev, come back here, honey. Come on. Take me shopping with you. <laughs> oh, is that funny, huh? Hi, I'm Joel Green, and this is my daughter. 
Devin. And today, welcome to today's Curiosity Quest. Now, Devin, what were you curious about? 